you've ever competed in boxing at any level, when someone comes in overweight, it's just a despicable thing. It shows no level of discipline. It shows that they don't respect the fight. They don't respect the other fighter. Who And the the weight cut is the most brutal thing. Honestly, I, I think that's why I stopped competing. It's because of the weight cut. The last one I did, it, it hurt more than any punch could hurt. Um, and three pounds over is a lot over. It might sound insignificant to a person who you know doesn't fight, but three pounds is a huge amount to come over. And the thing is, when you're coming up upon a fight, you're being weighed constantly. You're you're cutting fluids. You're not eating. You're weighing yourself constantly. So you already know what you're gonna weigh when you walk up to that scale. It's not gonna be a surprise. It's not like he got on the scale like, oh, I'm three pounds over. Nah, he knew that like hours before. And that's quite pathetic. You know, people do all kinds of things to make weight, and he just didn't do enough. It just shows that either he's scared um, or completely undisciplined. And as I said, I saw him last week and he didn't he didn't look shredded. Uh, he did not look like he was in fighting shape, and he certainly didn't have fighting spirit. He writes, come on, man, drinking beer in the weigh-in? That's crazy he did that. Wow. You know, any major fight that's in Las Vegas, I'm there. There's never a fight in Las Vegas, and I'm in Las Vegas, and I'm not there. I'm always there. I'm a fixture. And in some cases, I might catch a fight abroad. And, and that Loma fight was just like, bro, like, you're, you're such a, a disappointment. So whether he beat Haney or not, I don't even care to watch or check. because I consider him a bum. And I don't call fighters bums because, you know, fighters are really remarkable individuals, but he's a bum as far as I'm concerned. That's room. Crazy. That is like 101 pro wrestling right yeah. there. So shout out to everyone who got that done. I still can't believe it. That picture. This guy on the far right, is he a former boxer? Is he a former MMA guy? You see, I always wonder where these guys come from. Like I talked about Adam Salznick. And then now we have this fella right here who's like kind of the same situation. It's like, okay, he's not a former fighter. He's not a former boxer. He's not particularly good looking. He's not remarkably eloquent or articulate. Why is he there? Why is he there? How did he get put in position? How did he get planted there? Huh? Someone writes, he's an announcer. Well, clearly he's an announcer. He never fought. Yes. Well, might that make him different perhaps from the guy in the middle? Or other announcers, like say maybe, I don't know, uh, who's that black guy with the braids that wears those interesting suits? Sean Porter. You know, see, Sean Porter's commentary is interesting because he's intelligent and he's an announcer, but he's a former fighter. And you see, when you're a former fighter or a practitioner of a given uh, pursuit, you understand it at a different level, you see. For example, when I was with uh, Jake Shields at the UFC, I invited him to UFC. And um, so we're sitting there and I'm you know, asking him a couple questions because there was a, an eye poke that occurred three times during the Holloway match. Actually, I think it was two times. And I was actually quite disturbed by that in as much as an eye poke is quite painful. But you, you want to fight with your vision, right? Not without your vision. This is not Van Damme and the Kumite. And he said, you know what? It's actually quite easy to poke someone. So I wouldn't really take a point off. I said, well, why is that? He says, well, think about it. When you're parrying punches, your hand is open. And then I was like, you know what? That's a good point. But because I'm always wearing boxing gloves when I'm parrying punches, I'm wearing boxing gloves. My hands are always open. In fact, even when I throw a punch, I don't, I don't close my hand until, you know, until it gets there. So my hands are always open and I parry a lot of punches and I often have my hand in the enemy's face. So in as much as that's the case, it was a meaningful insight, and you would have to be a practitioner to know that. You would have to have put on those four-ounce gloves that do not have the fingers covered, and you would have had to have gotten into a fight to know that. Now, me, I've never um, done UFC, so I didn't know that, and that was very insightful, and that's precisely why I would much prefer um, a real fighter over an Ariel Helwani um, who has never fought and is just a commentator of something he's not done at all at any level to do it oh, by the way ryan looks in incredible shape yes that is nonsense i literally was standing right in front of him for a significant amount of time having conversation he had no shirt on he just finished a workout and i was looking at his body like this is not the body of a fighter in his 20s it's just absolutely not so no he's not in great shape that is a, a lie that is a lie you don't wear one of those body top outfits if you know that you've got a couple of, you know, a bit of timber around the belly area. He's looking good, isn't he? 
What's that? No. What's that? What is going on now? He's been walking around. What's that? He's been walking around everywhere. Uh, is, is that with a Mexican flag? Is that? Was that, <laughs> is that oh, he's trying to be Don King. Is that Bill Haney? Bill Haney, Bill Haney, Haney like morphed King into Don there. King alongside Eddie Hearn. Look at this. This is this is kind of a, a super team, though, isn't it? It's, it really is. I love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It. And, and by the way, may I acknowledge? Dwayne comes in by Cash App. He writes, uh, "N I G G A bum." <laughs> uh, uh, oh, he, I think you're right. N I G G A a bum. Kendrick Lamar voice. Right. As someone who loves some of the drama, now we get Eddie and Oscar up there together. That's always very fun, right? What's with the Mexican flag? I need to understand. Is it because yeah. he kind of started his pro career in Mexico? Like, what is this? I don't know, but he is looking very Don King-like. With those. That was a silly comment. I don't know who the British fellow is. And sometimes these British chaps just make me chuckle. But moreover, a lot of guys start their career in Mexico. You know, a lot of American fighters, especially if you're fighting out of Las Vegas or Los Angeles or San Diego, you know, Mexico is just right there. But that's what they do to pad their career. They go pro. They go down to Tijuana or wherever. They get a, you know, they fight a couple tomato cans, beat the snot out of them. And that's really where you go to start your career such that you can come back to the States and say, hey, I'm 5-0 and undefeated professional. Everyone wants to have that Floyd Mayweather record. And and as much as that's the case, there's increasing pressure on the judges to protect the cash cows of the sport. But yeah, this is very common. So for him to make that, you know, poor logic, like, oh, did he does he have a Mexican flag because he started his career in Mexico? No, he's trolling. He's fighting a fighter who is going to be largely supported by Mexicans, both in America and in Mexico. And that's why he's doing it. And Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather did the same thing. He had to fight against a famous Mexican and he wore Mexican uh, trunks. Um, so there you go. And also, speaking of Mexican fighters, we have Oscar De La Hoya. And I think that we don't, a lot of people who don't know boxing history, they don't realize that Ryan Garcia is the fake version of Oscar De La Hoya. And what I mean by that is Oscar was a real Mexican fighter, but he was also a pretty boy. But the thing is, Ryan Garcia is just a pretty boy, but he's not a real Mexican fighter. So the Latinos, of course, are going to support him because generally boxing is a very racialized sport. So people support the guy of their race because human beings are primitive and provincial. So they support the guy who looks like them. And then in the case of someone being good looking, it's always going to give you that X factor, that advantage, because, again, human beings are primitive and foolish and emotional and sex crazed animals. And in as much as that's the case, he's a good looking young man. It's more marketing. Uh, more commercial opportunities for him. So, of course, they're going to push him as a cash cow. But what really saddens me is that the young man clearly has mental health issues. So with him having mental health issues, all that's going on is exploitation. And I really wish we didn't live in a society such as this where we have men who are dishonorable and they're exploiting this youngster. And now, granted, this is his best opportunity. I don't think Ryan can do anything else well other than what he's doing, which is getting punched in the head uh, for a living. Because, uh, you know, he is not the most focused, disciplined person, and that's not going to go well in, in life as a man. Uh, but they're exploiting him. He's clearly not mentally well. And also, I would like to remind you all that drugs and alcohol are bad. And, and we can see this example by the conduct of uh, Ryan Garcia. I would also like to reannounce that Christianity is dead. Uh, and you can observe it in in people like uh, Ryan Garcia and that other you know ugly, dirty Canadian guy. Uh, who had a little, you know, spike on social media and then disappeared. Um, these are the representatives of Christianity. It used to be guys like uh, Mr. Rogers, and now you got these uh, social media clowns, plus the dude with the funny hair who wears makeup and has a church in Houston, but wouldn't let people in when there was a natural disaster carrying on. Those two flags holding them up like that. <laughs> I love it. Oh my Eddie dear. loves this as well. Because you know, Eddie and Oscar go Eddie's back and forth. Eddie's got a nice little grin on his face over there. Eddie's like, just give me this mic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll show you what I can do. But the team, the team is up there now. Devin Haney up there as well. I mean, it, this, this, this does feel special. And by the way, if Ryan Garcia is tricking Ah, up, shut up. Ah, shut, shut up. I don't want to uh, hear you. Back and Ryan Garcia went to a rivalry. Devin will meet at Barclays Center. Say, I want to wish him the zone. And this is like ugly suit day, man. Everybody came up there looking extraordinarily homeless. <laughs> Terrible. It's Usyk on the sun. To every celebrity out there, you name it. Everybody has one. So thank you very much. And this fight represents the tribes. 
Thank you. Thank you to Allah for making all this possible. Through Allah, all things are possible. Uh, shout out to Devin Haney because the brother, I don't, somebody tell me where Devin Haney is from. I can tell, by, or not Devin Haney, Bill Haney. I can tell by the way the brother talks that uh, he's definitely been around. Uh, you know, he he spent a little bit of time in them streets. And so, you know, he he strikes me as a real one. I like when I hear Bill talk. I've seen Bill around, um, you know, caught him at the airport in, in Vegas a uh, few times. I, I don't see Devin around, which is probably a good thing. Um, but shout out to Bill. Uh, Bill from Oakland. That makes sense. You hear me? That makes sense. Bill, Bill be gamed up. I could tell when he's talking. Um, we couldn't have been here without God's grace and God's mercy. Uh, this, this has been a heck of a promotion. Um, but there's one standout promoter, breakout promoter, who's made this thing happen tonight. Or I should say happen on Saturday. And that's Devin the Dream Haney. Um, when we started this journey... Um, we, we set out with one thing on our, I, I, and team and, um, trainer of the, when the thing work ethic, uh, as a pro make you, um, in fashion, because we saw what happened to him today, oh, this, because this I'm part sure that that's what he was reading. And this part is funny. Um, and you know, Bill Haney is a clever guy and there, there are those persons whom, I think are consistently underestimated and because they're underestimated allows them to be more effective. When you look at most black males, you can generally say, ah, okay, this guy might not be very disciplined. He might be overly emotional, inarticulate, not educated, and probably not that smart. And when you apply that lens to certain black men, you're wrong and, and you're going to suffer as a result. And I, I think people thought Floyd wasn't uh, a boxing virtuoso and a good businessman and it turned out he was both and that's why he kept winning his whole career and then when you apply that same lens to the haney side of things you know his father is no fool and i think that people underestimate his father's intelligence and also his father's ability to promote and I would also like to strangely bring up uh, Suki. I don't know if she's a rapper or what song she makes. I just saw a, a social media clip. And she was with that boring, uh, plain face uh, white chick who seems like she just got too much Botox and her voice has no emotion in it. I can't remember her name. She's one of those individuals that you're like, wait, what are you famous for? I also saw her at uh, Resorts World. She was looking hell of mid. Um, seems like a pleasant person, but super mid. She was, she was quite friendly when I encountered her, but very mid. Anyways. I saw her interviewing Suki and Suki was saying like some quite wild things and people in the comments like, oh, she's not smart. She's ghetto. She's this. She's that. And those things may be true, but the not smart. No, no, she she's smart. She might be wicked and black hearted and immoral, but she's smart. And she knows that those outrageous things that she says get her replayed. It gets virality. It keeps her name relevant and it you know lines her pockets. So as a result, she's doing the right things and the persons in the comments that are making negative comments are doing what she wanted you to do. So who really won there? Who's really smart? You being a broke person calling her names in the comments with no plan and then her being the person with a plan who's well off and saying things that are directing your behavior in a way that she decided. It's different. Use your brain, young people. And uh, while he's continued to make you guys think that he's something uh, that he's might be crazy or delusional <laughs> um, in fashion, because with Cambosos, we gave him the art of war because I'm sure that that's what he was reading. <laughs> I have a book for Ryan Garcia today. He passed out books out here. Look at Sometimes Ryan's face. I want you guys to see, I have a book see when he Cambosos, had a book we gave him Ryan's the art face. of war. Cause I'm going to enlarge this. He was in Ryan's head right there. By the way, shout out to Joseph supporting the work by Cash App. I appreciate all the men who stand up. Look at Ryan's face right here. Shout out to Michael. He writes, hello, Mr. Burton. I had been ear hustling but wanted to step up today. My girlfriend of two years used to be submissive and is now unruly. Soon I will be leaving to go full-time in the Army. How can I get the dynamic back to where I am in the dominant position? Well, the true question is, well, why did you get dethroned from the dominant position. That's number one. You need to figure that out. 
And also know that some things cannot be undone once they are done. That's number two. Then number three, you have to know that there's a maturation that we all go through. And the human female is one who is influenced by the immediate society, the culture that she is in, her friend group. And, you know, we need to know who's in her ear, who's influencing her. Or was it just a case of you met her when she was 16, now she's 18, and she's evolved in some way, in, in a way that may be disadvantageous to you. But at the end of the day, what I would do as a, a seasoned man who's experienced and has options and is not operating in a position of fear, which is why I'm glad you asked me, because I can tell you objectively, I can tell you what the best thing to do is, and that doesn't mean you have to do the best thing. But the best thing is to say, okay, well, I'm still a very young man and we've had some mistakes here. And rather than try to undo them or get her to look at me in a new way, which is improbable, let me take my lessons from this and apply it to a new female. And you have all the time in the world. So remember that sometimes people grow to look at you in a particular way and there's nothing you can do to change it, even if it's not accurate. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. So check this out. Look at look at uh, Ryan Garcia's face upon Devin uh, or Bill Haney's words about giving him a book. His his mind is very weak. In fashion, because with Cambosos, we gave him the art of war because I'm sure that that's what he was reading. I have a book for Ryan Garcia today. <laughs> look at him. He looks psychology scared. for dummies. <laughs> did the Oscar want to start laughing? Well, Oscar want to start laughing. Cambosos did. Oscar is hold hold steady, man. Shout out to Oscar. That's about boy Oscar. He had him the book. He launched the book. Well, that's what Cambosos did. You saw what happened to him. <laughs> well, so all this game that he thought that he was playing on the people, I don't know if he played, thought he was playing on you guys, but it didn't work with me and Devin. We stayed focused. There's no excuses. Come uh, Saturday night, put your kids to bed. It's 18 and over because what I'm sending Devin to Talk do to him shouldn't be on TV. Now, it's interesting the way Bill Haney is phrasing this for a number of reasons. Number one, it's like in the neighborhood, the OGs and the YG on a mission. You're like, bro, use a lightweight. I ain't even going to slap your helmet off. Send my young boy, I'll tune you up. So, and then there's, of course, the dynamic of he's actually Devin's father. And you ever been in the hood? Somebody say something out of line to your moms or, or to your pop. Your mom and pop be there like, oh, oh you going to talk to me like that? Yeah, I got a little boy about your age. He'll come see you. Did they sit you over there to whoop his ass? Yeah, it got to sound like that. But certainly there has been a violation on the part of Ryan Garcia. He's spoken ill of the Dean of Islam, which is clearly something that's very influential in the life of both Bill and Devin. And as a result, it seems as though they're about to uh, execute on some jihad on that ass. And so in as much as that's the case, I think that, you know, it's very personal. And you guys might also notice that there's a significant number of fighters who are Muslim. And I think the reason that you find that is because when people actually follow Islam, because it requires so much of you praying five times a day, five times a day at prescribed times, one of which is at sunrise, you have to be very disciplined. So it goes right along with the fighter lifestyle. And so that's why you see successful Muslim fighters. So anyways, I think that that's one of those things that makes it more personal. Also, Ryan said some things about some insults about um, family members of Devin's. And so when Bill says, you know, he's sending them in there to catch a body, I think there may be some authenticity to this as opposed to just promoting the fight. And these kinds of things makes it more interesting to me, especially when you have a very, you know, at least verbally devout Muslim. And then you have Ryan being one who likes to, you know, say the meaningless phrase of Jesus is king. Jesus should be better to, than king, frankly, because we have kings on earth. Carrying on. They have violated everything about boxing, including throwing the book, disrespecting the sport, disrespecting religion. And for that, all gloves are off. If him and his team are really who they say they are, come to the center of the ring. Come to the center of the ring. Don't run. Don't run. Because Devin is coming to do bodily harm to him. Now, the thing that's weird to me, aside from Ryan's reaction, is the fact that Bill Haney said, come to the center of the ring. It is possible that Devin can bring him to the center of the ring and break him down. Very possible. However, that's not Devin's general mode of fighting. That's not what has made him successful. In my opinion, Devin does not have a very, 
a strong chin. It might have been Lenaris. I forget who it was, but clearly a second-rate fighter in as much as I can't remember, but I think it was Lenaris. And Lenaris is kind of on the sunset of his career, former champion, though. And he stumbled Haney and for sure had Haney on them in line skates. So I think if Lenar, not to say Lenar's is a bum, but Haney does not have a strong chin and he does get hit um, when he's not focused. And if you're going to come to the center of the ring, you're going to get hit. If you want to go to the center of the ring, bite, ring, bite down on that mouthpiece and, and throw blows, you're going to get hit for sure. And does he have devastating power to where that makes it a great strategy for him? No, not at all. Furthermore, um, you're putting yourself at greater risk. Carrying on. Now, I want to thank you. I want to thank you, uh, boy, Ed mental. and DeZone. Oh boy, mental. Uh, for definitely believing in, in, in Devin from the very beginning. We had, we had a, we had a vision that we believed that that kids and millennials and young people like myself. Meteoric rise of the lightweight the and now super rise. lightweight division on TikTok. Ryan has, Ryan has done it all, and now oh, a world championship belt is within his grasp. He just got ladies bodied, and gentlemen, the pride of Victorville, California, That's and making crazy. his first appearance in the Big Apple with a lot of love from the fans. Hey, shout out to Brody for getting out of Victorville, man. That place is like I just think of meth, cheap white crack horse, and um jail like that i think they have like a prison or a jail in victorville but like victorville is a place where you know say your parents got a little bit of money but they're still actually poor and they still want to be in california they'll like move to victorville or hesperia like a place you've never really knew where it is but you're about to find out and it's like five hours from everything shout to rodney he writes peace of the saints ryan has no patience either he came in three pounds overweight terrible which is very unprofessional for a prize fighter. That's com that's completely true. Hell, it's even unprofessional for an amateur fighter. It, it's embarrassing. It's pathetic. And it, it shows that everything is wrong. Now, in some cases, people intentionally come in overweight. Like, for example, in Lomachenko's debut fight in which Lomachenko was overhyped, and I still say that to this day. He's a bum. Um, he fought Ma is a Mexican fighter. Mala, something with an M, if I remember correctly. But the gentleman was, you know, he was not in his prime. He came in overweight, and he actually, in my opinion, he beat up on Lomachenko. And it really, in my opinion, exposed Lomachenko, but the propaganda machine was still behind him at that point. Oh, Lomachenko's like the Matrix. Look at how he moves. Stop it. Stop it, please. Please stop. So anyways, um, people usually never come in overweight unless it's on purpose, like I think the guy did on Lomachenko. Uh, otherwise, they're going to be uh, at the appropriate weight. With a record of 24-1, and 1, 20 knockouts, Ryan King Rai Garcia. <laughs> Thank you, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. He said the Lord of Lords. See? That was, I don't even think that makes sense. That's my problem with Christians is that they're they're just, I mean, most religious people are not the most thoughtful folks, not the most rational people, but you know, Christians just say things. I'm like, where did you get that phrase from the Lord of Lords? Isn't there only supposed to be one Lord, which is like the Holy Father? So how can Jesus be the Lord of Lords? And is Jesus the Lord or is Jesus the Son, like the Son of the Lord? Honestly, none of it makes sense, but it just sounds ridiculous. And I guess that's why people like him can latch onto it because it doesn't make any sense. Shout out to GC. He writes, yes, Devin needs to box. Correct. I, I don't know if he needs to box, but I want him to box. If I was going to put some money down on Devin, I would for sure want him to box. Uh, he writes, Ryan hits harder than Haney. See, I don't know that Ryan does hit hard. I don't think that's actually been validated. He's not gone up against anyone that was a worthy competitor who said, oh, man, this guy has some power. And when we saw him in there against Tank, like it looked like Tank just ran through him like diarrhea. Uh, he writes, uh, Ryan hits harder than Haney. I, I don't think either of them have power, honestly, um, especially his left hook. People keep talking about that left hook. The left hook is a punch, A, that's hard to land just in general. Uh, lead left hook got, has to be very fast, and it appears that he does have good speed. But then again, Regis Pro Gray can punch, but Devin neutralized him. Yeah, and that was something that was 
touted about Regis is that he has you know power, and I would almost even say that mm, that kind of power. And you know, he got obliterated by Haney. It was not close at all. It looked quite pathetic. And you know, shout out to the NO. I, I think uh, Regis is from New Orleans, and you know, I like those boys down there. So you know, I was uh, wanting to see a good fight and a good showing for Regis Pro Gray. Was I at that fight? Might have been at that one. See, that's the thing. You go to so many of these things, it damn near becomes a blur. Um, he writes, I think Devin is so much of a better boxer, he can do it. Yeah, yeah, he is a much better boxer. But here's the funny thing. like, There's probably like kids in the gym right now who have no intention of going bro who are better boxers than Ryan Garcia, and that's the problem. He's a total hype job. You know, like in a town like Vegas, you got kids in the gym that just are in there because maybe their father's uh, into the sport or, you know, they're somehow connected and they've been training since they were eight and they're better boxers than Ryan, even though they don't plan to go uh, pro. Shout out to Gio since then, the baller alert. Can't even say nothing. He's like, bro, I just, I mess with the work. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wallin. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wallin. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank Father. you, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is king, king of kings, king of kings. No, okay. He is the king of kings. Jesus is the one above all. Okay. How you guys doing? That was, I, I was uncomfortable. That was very uncomfortable. And it's not because I don't love Jesus and I don't love the Lord. What do you guys want me to say? I've already said everything. I mean, what, what do you want me to do? I've already, I've, I've about already get, done it all. I've dark. already said it all. Oh, I've done it all. And now dark. I'm just ready to kick ass. I'm ready to, I'm going there and just fuck this man up. You don't understand. I'm gonna... that, that was, you know, pause. Just please pause. The way he said it, it's not even necessarily the words. It's the way he said it. He didn't even sound like angry. He just said it so peacefully pause. Oh my goodness. I'm going to fuck him up. You don't know what I've been training like. You don't know the vision I have. You do not know. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I'm on. Fire. You see, he's a real big mouth. He reminds me of like, you know, a, a brain dead broad. You know, you can't trust anything that they say. And when he says, you don't know what I've been training like, well, Pete, we should have a sense of it. There should be footage of your training camp. And I don't think you have been training in a serious way. Fire. I'll break this whole thing right now. That's how I'm fire. I'm strong. I'm strong. Strong, strong, ah, 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 ah. and I'm louder than that whole team. They got like five people there. Look how loud! Woo! Yeah, Mike Tyson shit right now. Yeah, this Mike Tyson shit. Go up, bro. Go up. Woo. Here we go. Oh my god! We have a fight. He's we a nut. A fight. Look at bro. You know, He's a um, nut. It is. It is a pleasure to uh introduce this he's next young man nut. who um Yo. you know as a world champion he's done it all Yo, bro. <laughs> one thing we can't say is that he's not entertaining and at the end of the day of course we have boxing purists such as myself who appreciate pugilism at a high level but the theatrics i appreciate these as well and he's making it entertaining and that's why people buy tickets to be entertained <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, the former undisputed lightweight champion and current WBC super lightweight champion of the world, Devin the Dream Haney. Alhamdulillah, I want to thank Allah for. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Shout out to Gio. He writes, Peace of Saints. I'm in Saint City. Big homie, you out here? I am out here. We got to link up. Um, shoot me. Uh, do you have my phone number? Shoot me a text. Do you have my, you have my phone number? For, for everything, uh, without Allah, none of this is possible. Um, the time is, is is very close. This has been a, a long time coming. And um, the talking is almost done. You know, the antics is almost done. This is not an easy fight, but this is a fight that I will make look easy. Mm. To, to all the that part that's really important he said it's not an easy fight and you know really at this level very few of them are he said but i will make it look easy and i think that's what the the onlookers don't understand none of this stuff is easy and fighting on like say basketball or football yeah they, they train and they practice but a fight camp is much different from that it's very grueling 
And also, I don't think any basketball player is ever scared to go on the field. You don't experience fear, right? I say this having played all of these sports. You don't experience fear. You might not want to lose, but you're never scared. There's no chance you're going to get knocked out and embarrassed in front of your family, your wife and kids, or end up waking up in a hospital like, whoa, last thing I remember is there was bright lights and a bunch of people cheering, and then all of a sudden I'm missing teeth waking up with my head bandaged. Uh, You don't have to deal with that. He's going to make it look easy. and. If he boxes, if he boxes, if he steps to the middle, um, something strange can happen. Shout to Deeply Goaded. He writes, I feel bad for Derek James. Four tough fights back to back. Uh, Ryan versus Tank, Spence versus Crawford. Uh, I don't know what that, that one is. He writes, now Tank Martin. Carrying on. Antics do everything. I kept my blinders on and I stayed focused. I have my tunnel vision, and uh, on Saturday, it will show all his antics, all, all the stuff that he's been doing will bet- betray him, and it will show, inshallah. I believe that's the best road for you. Because I don't think, I don't think Ryan has a heart to. I, think, I, think, I don't think Ryan will, will meet me in the middle. I think Ryan for sure will meet you in the middle, and I think that would be to his advantage for you to show up in the middle. Yeah. What do you think I'll do? I just, I just don't think you're gonna go in the middle of the ring. I, just, I mean, that that would be stupid. <laughs> it would. Yeah. It literally would. That's a fact. All right, come, come to the center. Come to the center. I'll meet you in the center. <laughs> what the fuck? Come to the center. All right, we're going to the center of the ring. We'll see what you do, bro. Nobody's worried about that. Go run. Go fucking go to the center. Do whatever the fuck you want. I'm gonna hunt you down. I'm just, I'm gonna fucking knock you out. This young man is quite vulgar for a Christian. Is that how the Christians are rocking nowadays? Shout out to Taylor. He writes, Peace to the Saints. Thank you for your time. So I appreciate that. Shout out to Taylor. He's very consistent, always supporting the work. $500,000. Hunt you down. I'm... This is an important piece. Listen to this. I'm going to fucking knock you out. $500,000. How much? Bet. Right, 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 right. Hey, so whoever come up with weight, pay $500,000. 100%. Okay. I'm not yeah, out of so right now, uh, Ryan's father told him not to take that bet. And eventually they agreed on a bet of paying $500,000, also known as a half a million bucks for every pound overweight. <laughs> My boy said a cocaine Christian. <laughs> you ain't lying, bro. You, sir, are not lying. I want your mama now. Hey. Nobody's worried about that. Go run. Oh. It's a bit. It's your thousand per pound. Hey, hey, Ryan. 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 Hey, hey, Ryan. Whatever you say, Dad. I got you. Hey, Ryan. Let's do five hundred thousand per pound. Okay. Let's do a shake on it. <laughs> I hate to use this word, but right now I feel like it's accurate. You're. Uh, a nigga yelled out, your mama want to put something on it too? And I think he did that because Haney, or excuse me, uh, Ryan's father was telling him not to take the bet, which shows that his father doesn't have confidence in him, probably globally, but specifically in the case of him making weight, which lets you know that it's already been a struggle. And shout out to Haiti's uh, pop because Haiti pop a hustler. He was like, nah, man, get that bet going. We'd take that extra 1.5. We could do something with it. Shit. Where's your mama at, baby? Where's, where's your mom? Oh, I'm going to go flirt with your mama. Ooh, she about to be fine as fuck. Uh, yeah, I want some of your mama. I want your mama now. That was very concerning when you're looking at a nigga talking about your mama probably fine as fuck. Like, bro, what do you mean, my boy? Are you imagining me with a wig on? What kind of shit is that, Brody? That's strange as hell. Your mama probably fight as hell. Bro, stop it. Please stop it. Oh, get, I guess hey, hit, your mama probably in my DMs. I'm, uh, y'all see Saturday night. That's it. Simple. Devin, your prediction for the outcome of this fight? Something is wrong with this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. No, something wrong with him. This shit not normal. <laughs> this shit is not normal. That's what happens when you face the Devin the Dream Haney. Yeah, you're gonna go one way or another. Yeah. Yeah, it's fast. Yeah. It's fast. That's, I am different. That's it's fast. All kick, it's all clicking in. So when Mike talk, never mind. Fuck, man, fuck you guys. 
<laughs> Ryan, we'll listen, you- but, but listen though, I want the world to give me my. Oh boy, oh boy. I think my, all my hard work with BBC. I think that Ryan. Okay, there you go. There you go, ladies and saints. Um. Oh yeah, and and one more thing I got to play for you because. I like how he was talking here. I respect what I heard from him right here. And I took a poll on IG. If you don't follow me on IG, check out Marquette Devon. That's M-A-R-Q-U-E-T-T-D-A-V-O-N. Um, let's take a look at this right here. Make sure that you guys can hear this. You know, close to death. Versus concerns. I told you a stoppage would just won't be good enough for us. Versus concern. Versus concern. I told you a stoppage would just won't be good enough for us. We want him to go to the hospital. We want him f***ed up. You know what I mean? We want him beat up. You know what I mean? You know, close to death. You know what I mean? And I said, listen, my boy said, on close to death. And and it, this close is to a death. over fight right here. You know, kids shouldn't watch this unless they're with their parents and they're and they're explained to it responsibly and appropriately. Other than that, you're looking at a match and you're looking at a man that's being sent in to kill another man. That's what Devin Haney is being sent in to do to Ryan Garcia. What's the thing that's upsetting you most? Is it the religion aspect about Ryan? I mean, when you're upset, you're upset. You never look back. And one thing about um, it's not about. It's funny how average people are not thinkers. They don't realize that some level people are just promoting the fight. Like a lot of this is just show. Devin Haney uh, comes Saturday night once he. I can't think tourist. about nothing, but they, uh, uh, April the twentieth, they can't uh, come yeah, fast. So I feel like those very strong words um, towards what you wanted to do to Ryan. It was the words wasn't strong when they was coming at us. I don't want to hear nothing about nothing being strong. He gonna get it. He's gonna get it. And he's gonna be the example of when you f with the Haney's. What happens <laughs> in the walk off? In the walk off. He ain't even tell them the interview was over. They just walked off like, bro, you done now. You done. I said what I said. All three of y'all is we finished is we done and you know the thing i like about bill and, and if you ever been in the gutter um when somebody say he gonna get it that can mean a variety th- of things but none of them are good you dig? but oh he gonna get it it's like oh yeah it's like your your days are numbered like we are going to catch up with you and i think he means that i absolutely do ladies and saints i'll give you some time to send in any comments questions predictions um right now And just one note for you all, There's a, a woman walked by um, Sassin HQ just now, and I'm in the community. I chose to have the Sassin headquarters in the community. I wanted foot traffic. I wanted um, to have a place for the guys to come together to do workouts and you know learn and you know all kinds of things. And so as a part of being in the community, you know, you want to support the community, be friendly and things like that. There's a woman who walks by on a regular basis, a uh, transient individual. And so every time I see her, I say, hey, do you want some water? Now, I've been homeless before, and I know there's a number of things you don't have regular access to, like basics, right? Like water, um, especially if you're not around the park that has a water fountain. So every time I say, like, hey, you want some water? I'll give her a couple bottles of water. And then one time she says, oh, do, do you have five bucks or ten? I forget how much it was, like five bucks or ten bucks. I'll get it back to you. Let me borrow it. Now, mind you, she's never asked me her, um, asked me my name, never asked anything about me scarcely even says thank you every time I give her water you know, for free you know, upon my offer. And I said, well, what can you do? What can you do for me? Like for that five or 10 bucks? Like, do you clean or anything like that? Now, mind you, I actually don't want her in HQ. I don't want her cleaning. I, I just want her to be willing to work before I give her the 10 bucks, which is nothing to me. She's an older black woman. It kind of looks like my grandmother. Um, and she's like, Oh no, like, I don't want to do anything. I was like, Oh gosh. I was like, no, in that case, I don't have five or 10 bucks, but it tells you a lot about human nature, which is that, you know, sometimes we take mercy on people who deserve no mercy and nothing really happens for no reason. Everything happens for a reason. 
if someone's in a strong position, generally for there's a reason there that you might not be privy to. So I want you guys always to stick to that three sentence Bible. Number one, be yourself. Number two, be good to yourself. Number three, be good to good people. Anytime you're good to someone who's not a good person, you always see the error of your ways every single time. Woman wants a free ride in a fancy car. It's like if as if I'm not already giving you things for free, you've done nothing for me, not even asked my name. And then what you do is you try to extract more. And it's really a sad thing. Now, what does it you know, bother me to, you know, give this woman, you know, 13, 14 bottles of water? Doesn't really, you know, register in my life. But that's what I want you guys to remember and apply every single day robotically. Um, Saints, it has been a pleasure to have this time to uh, fellowship with you all and to talk about something we we both enjoy, the sweet science. And um, I want to reiterate that I don't uh, encourage gambling or anything of the like. You know, enjoy the fight, save your money, be responsible with your finances. Until next time.